One thing that you can do to really improve that immersive feel in projects is to integrate sound and music seamlessly as part of the world. Having it appear to come from one direction and then, as you turn the camera, seemingly come from another direction really helps to sell that feeling of being a part of a living, breathing world. Luckily, 3.js actually makes this super easy to do. It's tempting to think of 3.js as just a 3D rendering library, considering the vast set of features and functionality that it's sporting, but it does support 3D audio as well. By using this audio listener API, you can quickly and easily integrate sound or even 3D positional sound in your projects. So the first thing you need to do is declare a listener, and that represents you, in essence, the listener. Since most of the time, you probably want to hear things relative to the camera, add it as a child of the camera. Now, to play some audio, it's as simple as a couple of lines of code. Declare a new 3.audio, pass the listener, then declare a loader for the sound you want, and supply this callback and set the results of the audio object you created. Set some stuff like volume, and play. And voila! Here, we have some music playing. But as I walk around, it's always at the same volume. If you wanted to say have an actual set of speakers in the world blasting music, we can do that easily. This is where you use the Positional Audio API. This is nearly identical to the audio object you created earlier, but instead you create this Positional Audio object. And there's a couple extra details. These need to be anchored to actual objects with positions in the world. So add it as a child to a mesh or something in the world. Secondly, there's some extra parameters to play with. I'm just going to set the reference distance, but there's a few others like the roll-off factor, which affects how fast the volume is reduced the further from the source you are, the distance model, which affects the equation used to decide how to fall off the further you are from the source, and you can use the max distance to set a limit to how far away you can be, or this set directional cone, which lets you make some sort of spotlight but for sound, like a directional speaker. Okay, we've got our speaker set up in the middle of the room here, and I'm going to walk up to it. I'll shut up now so you can hear. So that's working. And interestingly, if I put the speaker to the left of the camera, and now to the right. Now if you've got stereo speakers or headphones, you should have been able to hear the sound switch from one ear to the other. That's pretty much enough to get you going. But obviously I didn't stop there since I also found this neat audio analyzer class which gives you back the frequency data for whatever it is that you're playing, which is really neat. I used that to code up a couple audio visualizers. So the first thing you got to do is create some audio analyzers. So I've loaded a couple songs here, and I've created two audio analyzers, one for each. In this loop here, I created a whole bunch of boxes. Nothing special or crazy here, just straight up a whole lot of boxes. Finally, in the step function, what we do is loop over the frequency data. We normalize it to the range 0 to 1, and then all I do is use that to scale the mesh. We also use it to fiddle with the colors a bit using a color spline. By setting the emissive property, we can kind of make them glow for the blocks that are really scaled a lot. And the second audio visualizer, I made this one purely shader based. So what I did was created a data texture to take the frequency data from the analyzer. Then in the shader, basically what I'm doing is creating a circle with 2D SDFs, or sine distance functions. And I'll sample the frequency data from the texture and use that to make the boxes bigger or smaller, and also to colorize them a bit. Most of this code is based on Inigo Aquiles' tutorials, so I encourage you to check out his site. And here we go. We've got two speakers with two different songs, both on opposite ends of the area. I'll wander around and check them out. If you're curious about the code, it's up on GitHub. Until next time, cheers.